Today I want to talk to you about disruption. Disruption in your life, the good and the negative. Disruption is needed. I just want to say thank you for having me. I love this, this space, automotive. Our solar guys here, you guys rocked in quick. That was amazing, you guys do, doing well. Thank you, Andy and Jacqueline, for allowing me to close out this seminar. This is my first seminar where I'm actually closing it out and then going into a little 15-minute negotiation. Say thank you to my wife of 24 years in the automotive industry. I spent 20 years in this business. And today I want to talk to you about disruption. Disruption in your life, the good and the negative, because disruption is needed. Okay, a little bit about myself. Disruptive years. How many of you right now can raise your hand and say we've had disruptive years in your life? The major one that sucks with me, I like that. You're honest with yourself. So those of you that did not raise your hand, you're living a mundane life, in my opinion. Because if you have gone through life and you have not had disruption in your life, negative or positive, because you did not raise your hand, you're probably playing small. Okay? Probably had the blanket over your, yourself, living a nine to five lifestyle. You're not putting yourself out there. And I want to address that not to be mean or rude, but if you lived any sort of life, you've disrupted something, someone, somehow. 98 was the first time disruption entered in my life, and it was through a uh, home invasion. A home invasion. Men and women, men and women, kicked in a door, calling themselves sheriffs, and they were gangbangers, and they came and shot up the house, killed my friend. I held him until he died. That was 1998. Seven months later, it's 1999, the boy that I ran with, the three of us, my buddy was paralyzed. He had a motorcycle accident, a helmet, uh, a back tire coming off a triple berm. He was racing. A back tire landed on him, snapped his neck, and paralyzed him from the neck down. So in two years, roughly about seven months apart, I knew massive disruption. And they say the only time in your life that you're going to go through things to retain new information is to have disruption happen in your life because therefore it opens you to take on new information. Well, my new information was a negative one. When I get close to something, I lose it. I would tell myself that. His death was my fault. If I would have been at that race, I was supposed to be racing that night. I couldn't get the night off. I wasn't there. I was supposed to be with him, side by side on that track. Okay, the next disruption for me, 2015. My son was on the open heart surgery table twice. Almost died the second time. And I lost, my, I lo I lost all control of myself. Lost all control of my life. So for 20 years now, I'm almost in the automotive, 15 years at this point, I'm in the automotive industry. My 20s and 30s, amazing, man. I crushed it. I did well. I made a lot of money. I stacked a fortune, got homes, cars. My wife was with me the entire time. I didn't have your typical issues in the automotive industry from the drinking, the drugs. I drank. I had good times. I partied. I was young. But I didn't have disruption like I did in 2015. In 2015, my son, I couldn't bear his pain. I wanted his pain. I wanted it with everything that I had in my life. Okay, and um, I cracked. I cracked emotionally. I cracked physically. I turned to drugs and alcohol to the hardest level. Drinking, pills, cocaine. For three and a half years, I went through savings. My wife was unaware. Gambling problems. Uh, wasn't showing up in my life. Wasn't showing up in my home. And then the next disruptive state for me was 2019, when my wife and my daughter, my daughter actually, comes up to me and says, "Dad, I need you to leave." She was 16. She goes, I need you to leave, and I need you to go get help. And uh, that day, well, about a week later, after a bender, drinking, and drugs, my wife packed her bags and walked out. I made a decision three days after that to change my life forever and recreate. I went into a visualization state, massive disruption. I had all the information. I had all the pain in my life. People say you care so much with your heart because I've had my heart bleeding for a lot of my life, but I used to associate it with anything that comes good into me, I can't, I can't retain it. I'm not built for it. Everything goes away. In 2019, I wrote down who I wanted to become, what I wanted to do, and I have it written down on a sheet, and it's a total of 36 pages, this new man, this new version of myself to recreate, become elite. I wrote down the boss that I would go to work for because I'm back. I quit drinking and drugs overnight, no rehab. It was intense, an intense seven days of a come down and getting back to myself, finding myself, reading, going into a zone that I had never known that I could be a part of. And in that space, I wrote down, and if I, if I showed you it, I wrote down who I would work for, what I would rep represent, how I would go into the automotive industry and completely disrupt it. If I gave you that piece of paper right now to read, you would say it is Andy Elliott. In 2019, I met Andy Elliott in November. This is seven months after sobriety. I watched him for two months, and in 2020, I reached out. Our mission began. I want you to write this down. 
the temporary pain that you go through, if you get through it, that's who you can find who you can become. That's how you find who you can become. The world will never give you more than you can handle, and if she does, she will kill you. So your stress and your inability to change is a bullshit lie you tell yourself because you're comfortable staying where you are instead of the adversity of the unknown, not knowing where it could take you. How many of you right here struggle? Who are going to be real with yourself here? How many of you have struggles in your life? I have struggles, the Elliots have struggles, this tribe has struggles, but we have bonded together to form a tribe and a unity through a movement. There's about 200 people in this room. And it's said that 2%, four of you, stand, you stand up, please, Charlie, stand up. Armando, stand up. Two, you stand up, please. And you, young man, stand up. 2% of this, of this room, they say, will surprise us. That's it, these four. Let's say, hypothetically, look around. These four are going to surprise us. They're going to go off and do something with their life that will completely change their last name because they become the ones. The 98%, you guys sit down. Everybody else stand up. Ninety-eight percent of you will live the same life for the rest of your life. The rest of your life, where you are, the pain, the insignificance, how you feel about your last name, ninety-eight percent, the rest of you will go off to do nothing with yourselves. That's what they tell us. Why? Because not a significant disruption comes into your life for you to want to make the change. Everybody can sit down. Thank you for that. Does that make sense? Is that, is that, make, is that clear for you guys? Is, is that something that you want to hold on to? No, you want to be the 2%. Why does this tribe, how does Andy Elliott train 350,000 men and women? Why do 98% stick rate with us? Because we have a tribe. We're a movement. We move together. We flow together. Danny Klein, come up here, please. Jacob Hagerman, come up here, please. Let me get some water real quick. I'm going to show you what proximity looks like. And I don't have a lot of time, so I'm rushing. These two right here, these two young men, find them on Facebook. Jacob Hagerman. Danny Klein, these are my first two hires. I hired them for their potential. <laughs> I love it. He always loves saying that. So when I talk about change, 2%, how do you become the 2%? One, you have to envision it. Two, you have to write it down. You have to get visual with the process. And we're going to go over that, the proximity, okay, here in a minute. Proximity with each other. These are the first two hires that I brought aboard in Oklahoma. We came to Oklahoma. They changed. If you look them up on Facebook, who they've become, is absolute savage warriors, elite sales professionals to serve you at the highest level. They're part of the tribe. They're part of the movement. They're part of the culture moving forward. This is the vision that Andy Elliott had. When I first met Andy, you guys can take off, thank you. When I first met Andy, I moved to Oklahoma and I bring, him, I bring into him a training platform. I come, or I, came, I come to Andy to train. I wanted to be a part of his platform. I wanted to be a part of his mission and his vision. I came up and I showed up onto his doorstep at 230 pounds a man completely vulnerable, broken, rock bottom, took a jackhammer, and I dug myself a deeper hole before I finally said, dude, I'm done with this. I didn't know where to go. I did not know what to do, but I knew I wanted change. I knew I had enough disruption in my life to where I knew what I wanted. And when I told him my story, I told it to Jacqueline Elliott. I gave it all to him. I told him my story of who I've been, what I'm about, my 24-year marriage, how I crumbled, why I did it. And they didn't look at me like a piece of shit like I thought they did. I wanted to find truth in myself. I wanted to find a visualization on who I could become. And I wanted to know if I could get a chance, get an opportunity to serve you all at the highest level. When Andy showed me his vision, he had a course that was 29 bucks at the, at the time. He's building courses. He's building his automotive sales training. And I said, I want in. He goes, not interested. I'm not hiring. I wanted a chance to become part of something special. This is the movement that he envisioned. He has it written down. His wife has it written down. This is written down. This was visualized. Their first seminar was December. I don't remember how many people showed up, 20, 25 people. This is a vision of a man and woman, and everybody called them fucking crazy. You're crazy, Andy. Automotive salespeople don't train. They won't show up. They're pieces of shit. He goes, well, I'm not, tra I'm not training car salesmen. I'm training automotive business professionals. And when they sat me down at that table that day, and they said, hey, do you want to go to war with us? I said, absolutely. I started bawling. I lost myself because he hired me for my potential, not who I was. The man I was was broken frail. I had lost my confidence. I had buried myself into the ground, and I raised my hand, and I said, I want out, man. I want to change. I'll give you my heart. I'll give you my soul. I'll do anything you ask me to. I will back your name. I will be legitimate for you. I will be honorable in business. And he said, I need a man to go to war with me. Jacqueline signed off on the hire. 
I went home to Oklahoma, and I said, baby, we're moving to, uh, or I went home to California, and I said, Jennifer, my wife of 24 years, said so we're moving to Oklahoma to go to partnership with Andy Elliott. And she said, we need to talk about this. I said, we just did, pack your bags. I knew what I needed. There was no option for her. There was no talking. I knew what I had, and I knew where I needed to go. How many of you can commit to be a 2%er today? 2%. Now, we talk about 1%, but the 2% that are going to go change their self, go change their vision, well, it happens with proximity. I am close with Andy every single day. Every single day, he asked me, did you go to the gym if we don't go to the gym together? Did you study? Did you train? Did you reach out to your GMs? Did you reach out to your people? Are you taking the calls that you need to call? Are you on the Zoom calls? We are in proximity. Our coaches right here, everybody look right here. See these men and women in the black shirt? The Macklins and the, and the cute oranges, they walk around today looking like a, like a, I don't even know what it's called, a golf ball on a driving range. That's our team. Okay, that's our proximity. We're together seven days a week. We go to church together. People call us a cult. We're not a cult. We built culture around team and unity and faithfulness and honor. You can build this at your dealerships, and if you can't, you build it within yourselves, and then you become the leader. How do you become a leader? You set the example. Who here can set an example of themselves by getting up in the morning, doing the right things, honoring themselves, honor the relationship, honor their spouse? Who can build culture by becoming a leader? Once you do that, you become the example if you just do the work. Once you become the example, you become the leader. Once you become the leader, it becomes infectious. They gravitate to you. How many people right now lead by example? We need more hands. You are needed. People walk around saying, we need to wake up the sheep. We need to wake up the sheep. No, we need to wake up the lions. We need to wake up the lions in this room. We need to go to war together. You need to be in close proximity to us. You need to stay close to us. Some of you are new. You're new to this. this is your first seminar. You've been training with Andy for a week, and you question things. Like, this is not for me. This is crazy. This is intense. If you want the lifestyle that we designed for ourselves, you are going to have to become obsessed you're going to have to stay in close proximity to Andy and Jacqueline. My marriage was on the rocks. My wife wanted nothing to do with me, and I begged for one more opportunity, one more chance, just one more time of years of letting you down, crumbling our relationship, ruining our bank account, destroying our credit. I need one more time, Jennifer. I beg you one more time, and you got to move to Oklahoma. <laughs> She's like, all right, you're crazy. Let's go. And we did it. He ground me into the ground. He made me puke. He made me cry. She was not, actually, she's harder than he is. And they built my wife up. My wife now works for Jacqueline directly. She's lost 65 pounds since being side by side with Jacqueline. That is proximity. Thank you. Thank you. She's watching virtually right now. And this is our, this is our standard. It's a standard you have to set. So now you know you're in close proximity. You have a coach. How many of you have a designated coach within the Elliott Group right now? If you do not, you need to reach out to me. You need to reach out to the coaches. You need to reach out and get assigned somebody that you align with. If you come partner with me, I, I'll just be very straightforward with you. Most people that do business with me, my private coaching, he knows, huh? I don't give a f about your feelings. I care that your relationship is on point, and I care that you make more money, and I care that you're honorable to your person. And we will go build together. I'm the oldest one in the group. Thank you. I appreciate that. But it's real. You young guys, new relationships, new money, branding, opportunity. You got the Macklins. You got Chris. You got Danny. They're Instagram wizards. We have a group of men and women that you can stay in proximity with because we align. We're different in our ages and in our era and in our times and what we want in this life. I don't want security. I'll risk it all again. But I will not let my wife down. I will not let my people down. I will not let the Elliots down. And you stay in close proximity to us, your life will change forever. But most people, here's what's going to happen. You're going to go home. You're not going to have the perseverance to do it. You won't live in a state of gratitude like we ask you to. And then when someone mocks you, makes fun of you, you're going to be like, yeah, you're right. I don't need to be doing this shit. I'll go back to my mundane, normal life. And then maybe some of you will have to hit rock bottom before you decide to make a change. Or you look at yourself right now and write a couple things down. Number one, what is your standard? What is your standard? Andy has a very high standard. If we mess up the man's standard, which is number one, we do not do business honorably with you individually. You have a load of problems to deal with, and it's not pretty. If we lie to you, which we do not, if we tell you we're going to be somewhere and we're not there, if we schedule a Zoom call and we don't show up and you get back to that man, 
it's over. You have to have a very serious talk of why you lied because there, no, there is a standard. If you say you're going to do it, you will show up in all areas of your life for my f people. This has never been done before. Automotive sales professionals, automotive sales, write it down, automotive sales professionals, and you will graduate to automotive business professionals. This has never been done. The way you think, the way you talk, the way you act, the way you handle your finances, the way you handle your relationships is your new standard. You love your person? Take care of them. Take them to the highest level with you. Elevate the game and the standard. So a couple things we do with our standards. We pick a time. What time do we have time for us first to live in gratitude? That's in the morning. First thing you do. How many of you get up 30 minutes before work? Raise your hand. Stop it. 30 minutes before work, you're not giving your enough t uh, yourself enough time to breathe. Two hours, that's great. 30 minutes before work, so you're, fl you're, you're flying out of bed, putting your clothes on, doing your hair, and you're flying to work. No preparation, no gratitude for the day, no standards set up for you to go be the most elite version of yourself for that day. You have no game plan, you have no design. Number two, you're going to be honorable in business. You tell your customers you're going to do WEO work, you show up and you do WEO work. Does that align with you? How many of you guys promise something, you forget to put it on the do bill, and then you, you sidestep it? Raise your hand. Oh, my. Come on. Don't lie to me now. Come on. Oh, you guys are a bunch of professionals in. That's badass. That's good work. Number three, number three, you show up in all areas of your life. How you dress, how you perform, how you look, and you live by an honorable code. That is the standard you need to be living by. So if you stay close, in, close in proximity to, with us, with the Elliott Group, your coaches, those of you that do not have a coach, get with us. Those of you that did not sign up for the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday call, Wednesday is my hour. Tuesday is with Ian and Evan Macklin on branding, coaching, high-level negotiations as well. And then Andy goes over mindset and closing in negotiations as well on Monday. That is your proximity. That is who you can become. And that is the way of the Elliott Group. This is a tribe of men and women, a movement being pushed to the 21st century. Now, if you align with us, you stay with us. No matter what comes against you, we will be there for you. And that's the movement. Everybody stand up for me and I'll wrap this up for you. You guys ready for this? But I need to hear it loud. Welcome to the tribe. First we're going to say, we say one tribe. One, one tribe. Louder. One tribe. One tribe. One tribe. One, tribe. one, mission. one mission. One vision. One vision. That's the Elliott Group, my brothers and sisters. Thank you for your time. We love you all.